What beer do I want to try next? Beer time, it's beer time with the beer man. How's it going, everyone? How you guys doing tonight? Today, wherever you're from in this beautiful world, I am feeling good today. A little cold on the feet. Had to put some socks on, but other than that, I'm all right. Uh, welcome to the awesome chat. Holy crap. You guys are right on righteous. Cool. We got Urbic. Snapper Hunter. What's up, bro? We got Big Houston, which also hit his thousand. So congratulations there. That is freaking awesome. Hell yeah, my friend. DJ Video Scratch Channel, what's up, my friend? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? We got that girl, Bell Official. What's going on today? Starting to feel like a minister or something. Um, hey, Thrash, what's up, Brian? How you doing? Cheers, bro. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks for being here. Um, hell yeah. No problem, Big Houston. Um Turtles, what's up, man? And Nina Yordi, what's up? All right, cheers. Beer metal, that's right. <laughs> so we're going to do something a little different. I'm going to kind of show you um, what I'm reading this time because I want you to see. Usually I set up my notes and have them all read, and I look like a boring idiot. So I'm going to try. It's not going to be much funner, but it, at least you can see what I'm reading. And it's from uh, this is from BJCP. So I'll go ahead and uh, share this out here. All right, so you can see this is the English barley wine. Um, overall impression, a showcase of multi richness and complex, intense flavors. Chewy and rich in body with warming alcohol and a pleasant fruity or hoppy interest. When aged, it can take on port-like flavors. A wintertime sipper, yes indeed. Um, I've got a very nice one to show you today, too. So, hell yeah. Uh, appearance. Color may range from rich gold to very dark amber or even dark brown. Often has a ruby highlights, but should not be opaque. You should be able to see through that beer. Low to moderate off white head. May have low head retention. May be cloudy with chill haze at cooler temps, but generally clears to good to brilliant clarity as it warms. The color may appear to have great depth as if viewed through a thick glass lens. Yes. High alcohol and viscosity may be visible in legs when beer is swirled in a glass. I do not know what my alcohol volume is on this beer, but it is an aged one. It's a year aged. Aroma. Very rich and strong, malty, often with a caramel-like aroma. I know you guys can see this. I'm just going to read it. Uh, in darker versions or a light toffee character in paler versions. May have moderate to strong fruitiness, often with a dark or dry fruit character, particularly in dark versions. The hop aroma may range from mild to assertive and is typically floral, earthy, or marmalade-like. I found a marmalade hop that I can't wait to see if it works when I brew this beer. Alcoholic aromatics may be low to moderate, but are soft and rounded. The intensity of these ar aromatics often subsides with age. Um, so it's definitely a good aging one. Uh, I think they were saying up to three years, then you might want to drink it or something. But the aroma may have a rich character, including bready, toasty, toffee, and or molasses notes. Aged versions may have a sherry-like quality, possibly Venice or port-like aromatics, and generally more muted malt aromas. The malt of the grain bill, and this is actually pretty simple. It's a three-grain grain bill, uh, two specialties, and, and a main base malt. So hops are, I think it's, uh, what was it? 5.51 on the BUGU. Let me show you this real quick. Get out of this and we'll go and show you. Let me get with you guys real quick though. 
Uh, hey, Jules, what's up? Jules, cheers. I have to wait 24 hours before I can go live. Oh, no. <laughs> what's up? Prost. <laughs> cheers, Urbex. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I smoked a little too much herb earlier. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, 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 so. I was going to show you uh, this. Vital stats. IBUs, 35 to 70. So there's quite a quite a reach there from 35 to 70. You can go a long ways here. 8 to 12% on the ABV. Uh, SRM is like uh, 8 to 22 like I think an amber color to or a light gold, a dark golden color to a deep amber color. Uh, 0.53 on the BUGU. Glassware serving temps 50 to 55 in a snifter. Although today I am going to be using this little tiny nanic. Okay. So food pairings. Moroccan duck. I've never had Moroccan duck, but I've had duck before, and it's delicious, nice and greasy. English Stilton cheese, which I'm not very fond of. No, I'm not very fond of that. Dark chocolate. I am so very fond of that one. Okay, commercial examples. Blithering Idiot by Weyerbacher Brewing Company, wherever the hell they're from. Old Stock Ale by North Coast Brewing Company. I had their beer and love their beer very much. I've actually had this. It's pretty good. Uh, Barley Wine Ale by Dick's Brewing Company. Good old Dick. What's up, Dick? All right, Richard. Okay, so hello. Let me get with y'all. Make sure I'm touching base. We got boom in here. What's up, man? <laughs> I got a barley wine from your neck of the woods going today, boa. <laughs> what do you think of that? Right on. I'm glad you're here, man. Glad you're here. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> I like barley wines. I love them. They're good. They're really good. Real good sippers, even uh, downers. <laughs> if you feel like downing them. Hey, Tommy, what's up? Right on. Live from the basement. That's right. Okay, so, okay. Now, another place I like to go is this place right here. If you've ever been here before, craftbeer.com has a great library of information on most styles. And British style and barley wine ales, what they call it, although an English barley wine would be just fine. I'm not going to go through all that, but you can kind of see all the info they give. It is a little bit different from this because they 35 to 70, uh, and they say 40 to 60. So, and then they're going up to 12%, and then 14 to 22 SRMs, which is 8 to 22 from BJCP. So you can kind of see they're a little different, but it also gives the information, appearance, flavor, aroma, sensations, and the ingredients. Uh, that are your norm in this particular style. All right. So uh, thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you sticking around and uh, showing some support here. And um, hit that like button. Hell yeah. Let me get uh, let me get my little ticker going here. All right. So we're going to discuss this beer. We're going to discuss it. But first, first, oh, I forgot to uh, tell you a history, man. Do you want to hear a history, history lesson? Strong ales of various formulations have long been brewed in England and were known by several names. The modern barley wine traces back to Bass Number 1, which was first called a barley wine in 1872. Barley wines were darker beers until Tennant, now Whitbread, 
first produced gold label, a gold-colored barley wine, in 1951. Usually the strongest ale offered by a brewery, and in recent years, many commercial examples are now vintage-dated and offered as a limited-release winter seasonal specialty. The original barley wine style that inspired derivative var variations in Belgium, the United States, and elsewhere in the world. There's a little history for you. Cheryl Crawford, how you doing? Cheers. Cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to have a little bit of this real quick, chat with you guys. Then I'm going to wash my mouth, my palate, and we're going to have a review go, uh, go on. And then we're going to go into the recipe and uh, heck, yeah. First beer of the day. Smoked a little herb earlier, so we're feeling good and fresh. Um, you know, yeah. <sighs> Hold on one sec. I got to fix this. All right. That was cool. All right. So um, serving in my small little eight-ounce nonic. It's actually uh, from Great Britain. It's I got the British uh, little thingy on it, little uh, crown. Um, I just want to see how my – let me get my volume up a little more. Maybe get it to 95. Am I too loud or too loud? I don't even know. Okay, so let's get a beer. This one was given to me, or not given to me. I bought it for 12 bucks. Uh, it's actually a deal. I think it was originally, it was a little more than that. But got it over at my local store up the road from Justin Kobe. Thank you very much, man, uh, for ordering this cool-ass beer and uh, – and uh, giving me the chance to purchase it from you, man. I love supporting his store, and he's got a great lineup of stuff. When I go to him and ask him, hey, can you get this? And he looks into it, and he does his best. So he's always trying to look out for people. Justin, you are the man. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it only says it's a great beer, right? Okay, so these are. this is from Gigantic out of uh, Portland, Oregon. You can see the... Label there, and you can even see it closer right here. Yeah, so you can see it is a scotch version, so it was in scotch barrels, whiskey aged for about a year. Um, in making massive barrel aged, we use only Skagit Pilot Pale Malt and boiled for eight hours, giving the beer a deep ruby color and rich malt flavor. We then aged massive in a variety of barrels, massive being the name of the beer, uh, scotch barrels, mezcal, port cognac, rye and maple syrup. The sticker on the crown identifies which barrel this beer was aged in. This one is scotch. Where are you? Okay. So let's go ahead you can follow me in the top left corner or in the main there. I need my bottle opener. I'm break the seal. This way, Justin can see what I think of this beer. And massive, or excuse me, gigantic makes very, very delicious beers. So it's got a haze to it. Wow. Hazy. It's actually uh, pretty opaque. Um, looking at it, it poured a very small head. Uh, very slim to none. I didn't go too aggressive, but I kind of did. Uh, it's a big beer. I didn't tell you what the percentage was. Damn. I forgot to tell you the percent. 14%. 14. So it's like a wine, but beer, malt. And you're supposed to kind of actually see through it 
but as you can see, you can't see my hand. Um, it does have a bit of, I'm, I'm sure there's additives, uh, other stuff in there that might be maybe a chill haze. I don't know. Maybe they, maybe they secondary some hops in there. Um, I don't know, but that's what I'm getting there. It does look like a caramel beer, a caramel, a deep, rich caramel. Um, head was a nice off white to a tannish head. Let's go for the smell. Oh boy. Whoa. Wow, it smells like leather and scotch whiskey. Um, whether it be a single malt or a blend, it smells like whiskey. Whiskey barrels, kind of that uh, barrel woody kind of feel going on in the nose and the aromatics. But it also has a leather, like a leather belt, like a fresh leather, like a leather shop when you walk in one. With caramels, caramels big, toffees big. Butterscotch, uh, hell, it could even have some off diacetyl flavors in there. I don't know. Oh, oh my god, it has a, a smell. Um, it's very rich, but it also has kind of a chemical smell to it. Not chemical, but kind of, um, I guess, chemi or. It, it, but it has a kind of a purified water smell too. It's crazy. All right, let's get into this. Let's get into this. Let's look at it more. Let's go look at it a little more. So we got uh, we got a streaming bubbles up the sides. It's an active beer. It's a medium fast rising bubble. It's uh, thick. It looks very, whoa, like I'm afraid to drink it, to be honest. I'm glad I put it in this little eight-ouncer. Um, let's go ahead and let's drink this. Cheers. Whoa. Fruits, dark, rich, deep, plum, a little raisin with toffee and a rich, dark caramel. You're getting a nice baker's chocolate kind of bitterness. Not the chocolate necessarily, just that kind of like a bitterness feel like, like that does, like that baker's chocolate gives you. No, sh that, that lack of sugar kind of feel. Although it's very sweet on the tip of the tongue and dries off fairly uh, medium, let's say, through. It's thick. It's chewy. I'm in so I go chew it. It's like I'm chewing through a brownie or something. You're getting the scotch, the whiskey, the, the, a little even a vanilla feel comes through this. Toffee caramel, those big. Slight hint of chocolate, actually, if you want to talk about that. Um, I'm getting a nuttiness, like a nutty hazelnuts, maple. Holy crap, this is complex as fart. <laughs> this complex as fart. <laughs> it's very good, though. It's got a tangy dry, very dry, alcohol dry. You get that alcohol dryness going up your sinuses, but it's like a not a, it's not it's not a bad alcohol feel. It doesn't taste like you're. It's more like a vinny, like a wine, like wine, like the heat of what wine gives you. You know, the nice thirteen point five percent red wine or something that hot. I, this would be much better in in a in a sixty degree feel. I, I would rather have sixty degrees on this, or even sixty five to be honest. Uh, room temp. Very good, though. Very tasty, very interesting, fun to drink, fun to sit down. It's drinkable. There, But there is a little bit of pain and heat, like as if I have heartburn right in my throat. It's starting to get heaty down there. Um, a warmer, though, a winter warmer, a sipper, one that you can sit there, look at a movie with your wife, your girlfriend, boyfriend, whoever the hell you're lit sitting with your grandma, your grandpa, and uh, watch a movie, watch the news even, whatever the hell you're doing before you go to bed, and just sip away, and just like get loose. You know, a nice loose sipper. I love it, man. This is good and chewy. Out of 100, 
since I since I since I read that it's supposed to be a little clearer, I'm gonna deduct a little bit of pointage. But as far as the overall presence and presentation and aroma, flavor, this, that, the mouthfeel, the body is like robust, full robust pushing. Uh, mouthfeel is just smooth and uh, not super like, not super carbonated, just very like tranquil through your mouth. It just kind of pushes through and lathers your mouth with this nice coating chewiness. Holy fart is the big word tonight. It's very good. Out of 100, I'm going to do a 92. I'm going to give it a 92, pushing mid-range A. Um, very good, though. I do suggest if you can get this, please pick it up because it's delicious. So, all right. Let me get back with you guys. We got awesome 11 people in the house. Thank you so much. And thank you, Viper. Holy moly. I just saw the blue down there. That's the first one I'm pulling up. Thank you so much. Cheers and peace. Hell yeah, dude. Let me go back up here just a moment. Just a moment. Uh, we got Dan the man. Cheers, bro. All right, man. Sorry I was all off in my tasting uh, environment there. Um, Nina, man. Cheers. Cheers. How, how does it compare to a buck? Thick, rich. Thicker, chewier, uh, even in the, uh, I would want to even say going like in the tripel range or something. Um, it's very coating. And, and it, 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 as far as the maltiness, the brown bread or anything like that, that I might maybe might get off of a buck, um, I would say it might be there, but it's so overwhelming with so many flavors there's this complexity that's off the hook. It's 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 crazy how much things I'm feeling out of this. I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> it's just a great beer. It's just that it's so hazy. It's weird. DJ, what's up? DJ Video Scratch Channel. Cheers. 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 Fart. I said it. I said fart. <laughs> Hello, Thrash. Hey, Beer Man, Viper, cheers, and thank you again for that awesome, 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 awesome donation there. That was great of you. Thank you so much. We got Lep TV, Leprechaun TV. Cheers, Lep. All right. Good to see you. And we got, we got, we got Sun City Scratches, the V3 in the house. What's up, dude? Hell yeah. Good to see you here, and thank you for being here. Uh, well, hell yeah, there's a lot of hellos and this, that. And then we got Boo Men's Beer Reviews. That beer sounds banging. It is definitely banging, dude. Oh, I went, oh, I got to clear me up. Dude, where, you're, you're all lost into the farts. I know, I was like farting when I said fart. Uh, <laughs> Cheers, Boo Men's Beer Reviews from DJ. We got the thumbs up from Viper. Hell yeah. Cheers, DJ Video Scratch Channel. Boom, man. Boom, man. Hell yeah. Check out. Check everyone out here. Great people here, man. Get connected. Get connected. What's good, DJ? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Cool. So let's, let's, let me show you what I'm doing first. This is what I came up with. And it's actually, it's, it's, it's not really, I guess it's a, it's not really a copy but the grain bill is. I copied the grain bill from another one because I thought it was, it sounded good. Um, it sounded good. So let me show you that. So the grain bill for my English barley wine, which is definitely different than an American barley wine in that the hop uh, hops are more than 0.53, I think, is the BUGU for this English barley wine on the BUGU scale where you're looking at a bigger hop BUGU scale for the American one. So a little more bitter. This one is more fruitier, dark fruits, this, that, like I explained. It was actually pretty dead on, that beer. Getting a real good heat in my stomach, by the way. Grain bill for this is 29 pounds. This is for an eight-gallon batch, for an eight-gallon batch uh, of Maris Otter. 
I wanted to get that uh, biscuit and uh, a lot of the biscuit flavors and this, that it's a little richer um, and it sticks to the style, which is an English barley wine. 1.75. Let me uh, bring me up. Hold on. Oh, I, I forgot. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm kind of dumb right now. Okay. Um, 1.75 pounds of amber malt and caramel crystal 40 they do call for uh 45 l uh lava bond which they're saying 45 lava bond crystal one malt by faucet uh faucet amber and then uh, faucet's amber malt uh a pound of each and uh for a five gallon batch 16 pounds of marisada so i boosted it up to 29 um Faucet Amber, they say malt adds a dry and near roasty flavor that given time to mellow comes across as a kind of smoked caramel, um, which is weird because that actually did kind of get, it is kind of smoky. I wonder if they, it's got kind of a smokiness to it, it, it very slight, not peaty, but smoky, like smoked malt, kind of like malt, uh, Malty Mondays the other night. With the Roush beer, um, but not as much. So we're going to do uh, 3.25 ounces of Phoenix. Uh, we're saying it gives somewhat of a light chocolate kind of essence if you do it right or add enough or whatever. So I'm putting 3.25 ounces of Phoenix at 60 minutes. We're doing a 90-minute boil on this, although it's not super necessary. 2.25 ounces of East Kent Goldings at uh, 30 minutes, 5% alpha. Two and a half ounces of Pacifica, which has that marmalade flavor in it, 5.5% uh, alpha. It's a New Zealand hop at five minutes. I'm not going to whirlpool, I'm not going to dry hop, and I'm not putting any carapils in. Um, and I just... There, it, it, the 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 idea behind it is uh, basically there's no need to augment it with additional dextrins from carapils, and doing so could cause issues with the attenuation. Um, when beginner beginning brewers run into the problems um, with what seems like a stuck fermentation, the root cause can often uh, be traced to large amounts of caramel malt in the grist. So I, I'm going to stick with what I have. I think we'll get enough from the Maris Otter for body and head and stuff like that, mouthfeel. Um, and if, if anything, it's a trial and error, and we'll see how it works. The findings, of course, a teaspoon of Irish moss for clarity. And uh, I'm not going to dry hop, so I won't have any chill haze. And there's also a way to go about the fermentation on this. You want to go really cold at about 66 degrees. And then slowly bring it up halfway through um, up to a higher range, probably around 70 degrees, 68, somewhere around there. Um, and uh, so let's see, I'm trying to get, so regarding fermentation temps, this will minimize the off flavors and promote attenuation as well as prevent fusel alcohol formation, which can be a problem with this particular style. Crash the temperature, carbonate to about one and a half volumes of CO2, then put it away for 11, about six months. Um, I'm going to use two packages of the Y Yeast 1028 London Ale Yeast. Um, seems like a good one. It'll give me some fruity feel to it as well. So we got miscellaneous magnets in the house. Cheers, man. Cheers, bro. Let me uh, get back here. So that's where we're going with that. Cheers, miscellaneous. So I thought, let's see, I thought you were reaching out for a virtual high five there. I, I gave you a, <laughs> come on, give me a high five, everyone, man. Come on, come on. All right, cool. All right, that was awesome, dude. That was a great comment. <laughs> oh, shit. This is funny. This is a great show, man. You guys are great. You guys are what make it, man. So thank you. <laughs> 
All right, let's share the screen. Let's get a, let's get this going. We're gonna make this. We're gonna put it together. All right, so we got quite a quite a uh, quite a. Uh, well, since that's already in there, I don't have to delete it. We've got quite a library here. <laughs> Follow my cursor, everyone. <laughs> oh, am I on the right thing? Okay, I hope you guys can see me. What's going on with that? That's weird. Or do you guys see it when I put it up? Because that's weird. It's giving me some weird damn thing. Oh, I don't know what that was, dude. And I don't know what that is. Hold on. That's weird. Never mind. We got this. Okay, there we go. Yeah? Okay, we got it. All right, so uh, follow my cursor, my white cursor. I was trying to... Uh, you can see here I was trying to use my mini cams to draw, but it doesn't show up. So never mind. I have yet to learn. Brian knows a lot about mini cam. I don't know hardly crap about it. I need to go in and like check it out. You got some great, uh, great chip thing by the way last night. That was awesome. I don't know if you guys saw that, but go check out his video and get, get some views in there. It was great. Um, no, you've got some great, um, effects and stuff you've been pulling up through that, through your camera and stuff. It's great. Um, so follow the, uh, cursor. We are, we're going to call this, it's beer time, of course, as that is the name of my so-called company, I guess, that I'm trying to put together. Um, <laughs> and we'll call this the English <laughs> virtual high five. <laughs> I love it. I'm giving it the virtual high five name, and we'll call it English Varley Wine. All right, virtual high five it is, dude. That that is just fucking great, phenomenal. Um, thank you for that suggestion on the name, even though you didn't suggest it as a name. I'm gonna take it as a name. Beer man. What's our time like? What am I out here? Ah, we got time. We got time. Okay, uh, we're going to change this to eight. We're going to actually go. I'll just, I don't know. I don't know why I do this. You don't have to do this. It's already set for 10. I'm going to go to eight, though, since it's a bigger beer. We're going to go 90 minutes. It'll calculate how much water I need. Estimated pre-boil volume of nine gallons. 72% uh, efficiency if my system is efficient enough. Hopefully, it'll be that or more. Um, I'm going to change this down here in the yellow to 10 gallons, not 100 gallons, 10 gallons. And I do need to change this too. And they have it in Beersmith. Check out all the links I've talked about tonight in my description. And uh, also check out Beersmith. It's a really great software. Um, where are we at here? English barley wine. There it is. And they have English barley wine, so that's great. All right, so we're gonna add uh we're gonna add 29 pounds of Maris Otter. There we go. Oh, it's a big ass bill right there. Uh one one and three quarters pounds from 1.75 pounds of crystal 40 is what we're gonna use in substitution for the 45L. If I can find that stuff, I will find it. But just to try it, I think this will be just fine though. Just fine. Um, so we want 1.75. A lot of the reasons I use this system and let you see how I do it is just so you can see how I do it. See how anyone does it. it it's really a very easy system to use, program to use, software to use. Um, it's just a matter of getting used to it. Kind of like Photoshop was very hard at first. Uh, you know, when I, I got into that, what, 13 years ago, and I, I learned it. It took about six months to finally feel the rhythm of it. Um, but, boy, that's a hard one. <clears throat> and then we want some amber malt. Not acidulated, acid malt. I want that. I want sour. 
Um, and then we're going to go 1.75 as well on that, which uh, brings it to 5% of the grain bill, which is perfect in my opinion. Um, 89% on the base malt, perfect in my opinion. Okay, enough opinions. So let's go to, um, we're going to 3.25 ounces of Phoenix. Where is Phoenix? And we're going to go, we're, after 30 minutes passes, we're going to throw it in at 60 minutes. And then we're going to add uh, two and a quarter ounces of 5% East Kent Goldings, EKG, at 30 minutes. That would be... Where the hell did it go? Dude. There it is. <clears throat> what did I say? I forgot, dude. 2.25. And that would be 30 minutes. 5%. If you get other percentages, you'll have to uh, adapt it to your grant to your balance. But this is what Beersmith has as a general uh, alpha for these hops. Uh, two, two and a half, 2.5 ounces of Pacific at five minutes in, at the end of, towards the end of the boil. Uh, Pacifica, P, 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 Steve, P. Don't really P. New Zealand hop gives you all the information. Isn't that great? Love it. Just hover over it and it, with your mouse, and it's great. Uh, two and a half ounces. You got to base it off your uh, percentages too. What are you looking for? You're also looking at your BUG. You're looking at what, uh, you know, your bitterness level. You're going to get more bitters in your, you want a bittering hop that's going to give you bitters in the beginning, uh, initial uh, boil. And then, of course, you break it down into your aroma and flavor hops uh, towards the end of the boil. Um, kind of like cooking food or anything else. So, you know, you add certain things at certain times of your boil or, or of your sizzle, of your grill, of whatever you're doing. It's, it's kind of the same, uh, same chemistry. Um, did I already, I did 30 minutes and that was five. So five minutes pellets or flour don't really matter. Uh, I, I honestly kind of like, I guess pellets would be better if you don't want to maybe don't want to stuck sparge or why well, not sparge, you're not sparging your boiling in at this point but if you don't want a stuck filter or a stuck spout or anything like that it might sometimes uh the 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 pellets can uh can uh they break up and they get small and they start to cake up so you gotta <clears throat> flowers seem to give you that filter so that the juices go through easier through your filters that's that's what i've always found but um that's just in my experience just my experience nothing going on in the whirlpool no 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 uh dry hopping going on we're going to add the miscellaneous uh, stuff, um, and that is the Irish moss at one teaspoon at about 10, 15 minutes boil. Um, the yeast we want is the 1028 London, so we're going to go straight to L here. Uh, I really, really push it. Anyone really try, anyone try to brew a beer. Do, a, do an extract only. You can find extract with that's pre-hopped. You know, it's got all the hops already in it. You just boil it up for a certain amount of 60 minutes or whatever and, and throw in your water and boil it up and do your thing and and, and pour it into your, your fermentation vessel, your bucket, or your your, your carboy, and, and there you go. It's so easy. I mean, it's so fun. Um, but I don't suggest making a, having a system that's over the counter that makes it real quick like a coffee maker. <laughs> Although YouTube, I saw a video where it actually tasted good to her. So I don't know. <laughs> what is the – where's the freaking uh, yeast at? It's a Y yeast. Oh, there uh, – no, I thought that was it. Where is it, dude? There it is. Fuck. I'm gonna do a um, a starter, a yeast starter for this as well. It's a bigger beer. We'll do two two tubes and a yeast starter, and uh, put it in that way. Get it prepared about 24 hours in advance, and uh, do your thing. So this comes out to point 
529, which is like right on the dot. You can see it right there. Uh, let me hide that. Five, where my cursor is. We're doing 58.1 IBUs. You can go up to 70 on this. 10% is what I'm getting. So I'll definitely age this for at least a year. 13.4 um, SRMs, which is around an amberish, deep amber kind of copper, almost pushing color. Um, you can go up to 12% on these. So, um, yeah, so it should, this should be good. Let me put one thing in just to kind of, so we're getting an, what the hell, seriously? Oh, it's because I forgot to put eight in here. You have eight gallons. So 72.1, if everything goes well, we're going to okay that. And uh, there you go. There's another. Uh, and you can print this out right here for those that don't know. Uh, you can print this out. The Virtual High Five English Barley Wine. Fucking love it, Boomin. You are awesome. You rock. Check out his channel. You got the you got the name of the beer of the day thing going on here. So um, cool. <laughs> I really like that name, man. <laughs> I'm going to go back here to all the chat, all the wonderful chat. We got Paul in the house. Middle for what's up, bro? Always wanted to attempt a barley wine, but would need a mountain of empty <laughs> the size of my house. <laughs> a mash ton. I said mountain. A mash ton the size of my house. Yeah. Uh, Brian gave the thrash was saying on a 10 gallon, if you want, if you had a 10, like a 15 gallon kegel system, like I do, like he does as well, um, to do like eight gallons is perfect. Uh, it'll definitely probably top off, you know, on your malt, but that's, uh, if you can get a 15 gallon kegel system, that would definitely, um, prove to work, I think. So I am good. <laughs> oh, he's good. <laughs> or whoever you're talking to. I hope they're good. <laughs> Cheers, Brandon. Craft beer pours. Cheers, man. Hell yeah. Most of my group, uh, brew group has moved over to Brew Father. Great cross-platform use. Share recipes is great. Don't need an XML format. Works great on my, on my phone, too. I'll look that up, actually. Brew Father. Let me look that up now, actually. I'm so familiar with this one that I'll probably stick with it, but I'll definitely check this out, especially if you can do it on your phone and stuff. So that's kind of interesting. Right on, dude. Thank you. Saute. <laughs> Saute what? <laughs> Saute something with this beer because this beer needs some saute next to it. Oh, it's so good. It's like it's so delicious. It's it's dangerous. It's very dangerous if you want to go that far. Um, <laughs> so cool. I've got, I've got high five, a high five. Okay, um, I've got <laughs> another high five. Come on, come on, make a high five. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely uh, do a little shout here. I've had a great beer. I don't have a second one to go over. Although this, this was a very expensive beer, so it was worth the one for the show. Um, yeah, so my thing, beer and cheese, let's do it, it's open, bring it on, come on in, Tuesdays, beer and cheese Tuesday, 8 o'clock Eastern, uh, 5 o'clock Pacific, and uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning, England time, Britain time, so bring it on, let's do it, boys and girls, let's do it, all right, so uh, ladies and gentlemen, this, that. Just no kids. <laughs> they can't drink. <laughs> okay, so uh, we got – then we went Wednesday. I don't know what it's going to be yet. I never know until about the weekend or the day before, and then I crunch time and have to do all my notes, like, while I'm drunk. But um, fried quickly in a little hot fat from his brewing boiling explanation. <laughs> <laughs> Slante. Slanta. I forgot how to say it again, damn it. Slanta? Slanti. Slanto. Slante. How do you freaking say that again?
Slancha. Damn it. Slancha. Okay, so, ah, thanks. Mix that part, Nina. Nina. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> I know. Well, they say it's C-H-E, cha, slancha. But slancha works, too, for me. Um, however it be, <laughs> slancha actually works better when you're, like, drunk. Slancha. Hey, Florida Jim, cheers. Cheers, man. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're, we're discussing how to how to say S-L-A-I-N-T, which is the um, Gaelic or Gaelic, Gaelic for Scots, Gaelic for the Irish way of saying cheers or however it may be. Uh, slanja, slanja, slancha, however it be. So I don't even want to go there, Nina. I don't even know how to say that. <laughs> so I, I, I would have said that maybe it was slante, but I was saying slante, and then I got, I, I, I was told that it was wrong. So I think there's just mixed variations, kind of like a New York accent, a Jersey accent, a Boston accent. And hey, man, I'm from Los Angeles, man accent you know what i'm saying i think everyone has their own little things so i was okay with slaunchy because it just like was cool it sounded funny but um brew father i'll check that out though that's that's nice um cool so yeah beer uh and uh, uh, uh beer and review re what do i call it recipe and review time <laughs> Recipe and review Wednesday is uh, is is unannounced at the moment because I don't know what I'm going to be doing till the last minute. Uh, so stay tuned for that, and uh, I'll provide you with fun and how to make a certain beer style and uh, everything else behind the whole neck of the woods here. So, and then everyone else, I love my community. I love the beer community. I love everyone's community. All the people that support me. I, uh, I, I shout you out in a general essence. Much love to you guys. Um, the, the, particularly the ones that I, that I go to uh, on a regular basis would be Malty Mondays at 8 o'clock Eastern. Follow him. He'll be showing off his uh, What Wins Tonight uh, on Ron Therio's channel at uh, Wild Card Wednesday, which I believe it's Wild Card. Uh, be there at 4, uh, 7, 20, 7, 30 Eastern. Uh, and then after that, I will not forget uh, Beer Chugs with uh, um, with the ABV. Please follow us there. I will definitely be there. Sounds fun as hell tonight. So, uh, hell yeah. Follow them. Follow at 9 o'clock Eastern. Yeah, 9 o'clock Eastern. Uh, I believe he's on my time, so 6 o'clock Pacific. Um, Friday Malt, uh, is uh, Alex Beer Master's. Food Friday, bring any beer with Italian food of choice. And uh, John and Nilly's got Sunday, Stout Sunday, and um, at uh, 10.30 in the morning. Uh, I can never make that. I'm so sleeping. And um, Blake TV has this thing as well as CBP, uh, Craft Beer Pours. They do kind of their thing. Some, sometimes it's kind of just like intermingled, um, but follow their thing right after uh, Alex the Brewmaster. Master. Uh, a lot of fun things going on. Uh, I think, I don't know. I Hopefully I didn't miss anything too much. Uh, but that, that's at least what I follow in the beer community, um, if you want to follow us there. Um, but I definitely want to uh, to shout out everyone that supports this uh, my channel. Uh, and me personally, I, I love you guys. Uh, thank you so much for your awesome support and your friendship. Um, so I do want to, what I want to do, Vanessa, what's up? Cheers. I need to make that. I need to make that sometime. I am going to mention everyone's name here that started and uh, basically give you a name shout out again. So we got Urbex Sniper Hunter who showed up in the beginning right on, man. Big Houston. Thank you. Big H And thank you to everyone. I don't have to keep saying it. Big Houston just hit his thousand. Check out his channel. Uh, awesome uh, freaking dude, man. He trucks. All across the – everywhere, man. Trucks all of our stuff to us during this crazy COVID time. So uh, so, so check out Houston, man. Uh, has to deal with quite, quite a few things throughout his uh, journeys. 
So we got that girl, Bella Official, um, who showed up. Thank you so much for your support. Dash Metal Homebrew and Barbecue, uh, who did a great fit, uh, chip, uh, hot chip, uh, uh, pocky chip challenge last night, along with two others as well, um, Drunken One and Kyle. That was a great show. Thank you guys for displaying such madness. Um, check out his channel. Thank you for being here, Brian. Uh, Turtle Shang, Elbow Bump. Hell yeah, dude. Turtles, cheers, man. Nina, thank you so much. Nina Yordi, check out her channel. She also does beer reviews as well, and a great job she does. Very descriptive, uses quite a lots of adjectives, and is just overall a freaking cool girl. So uh, thank you for being here. Jules, another cool girl and another good supporter, an awesome person overall. Thank you and cheers. Um, uh, da, 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 dee. we got Tommy Carroll, who's also a very good uh, supporter here in the beer in the beer scene. Thank you so much for being here and live from the basement. Hell yeah, Cheryl Crawford, another great supporter and great person overall. Dan the Man TV, thank you so much and right on, man. Uh, we <laughs> DJ Video Scratch Channel did a scratch of my video, dude. <laughs> that was awesome. Check that out on his channel. Uh, <laughs> Viper Scratch Offs, thank you so much for your super chat and for just being here. Thank you so much. You are awesome. Um, he is part of the Scratcher community along with Sun City Scratchers. Much love to you and Mama Soda and your daughter as well. V1, V2, V3 family. You guys are great. Um, Leprechaun TV, thank you so much. Uh, you guys are just you rock, man. I follow Lep on freaking Facebook as well. Just a great, splendid dude, man. Um, man, I, I Bullman's beer reviews just freaking I'm awesome, funny dude, cool dude, knows his shit, does some great beer reviews, man. Uh, seriously, check these guys out. Uh, Burley Sullivan, always around on the beer channels, checking us all out. Thank you so much for being here, man. Uh, how do you make a burly wide? <laughs> I might have to push that up to like a 15, 16, 17% of them for that. Yo. <laughs> we got miscellaneous magnets. Another great supporter also has uh, a couple channels. One, in, uh, for instance, is his main channel where he fishes for, with his magnet and picks up lots of crazy cool things. He also is a beer reviewer on our channel and makes beer as well as a beer brewer, the home brewer. So welcome, welcome here, man. Please check these guys out. Hell yeah. Middle Fruit Paul is super great, super cool dude, a funny dude, dry humorous as fuck, but cool as hell, and I love you, man. So he knows his shit about beer, too, and he's a, he's a Canadian boy, man. <laughs> no, you're great, man. Love you, man. Um, craft Beer Pours. Hell yeah, dude. Much love, Brandon. Cheers. Thank you so much for being here. Um, Trish, cheers. Also, his wife, um, who has Keep Sipping channel. Keep Sipping channel as well. Uh, just a great husband-wife team. Um, he was on my beer and cheese. Thank you so much for being there the other day. Hopefully, I'll see you uh, more often. Um, hell yeah. We had Florida Jim here. This guy rocks, man. Hell yeah. He's just a funny dude. He's a cool dude, and he speaks reality. He's just uh, – he's a cool dude, man. Really love you, man. It's good to have you here. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Vanessa Kitty and Patch Heaven. Cheers. I didn't see you till the end there. Cheers, Patch. I'm going to put that in just to type it. Hell yeah. And Chad, Patch of Heaven, he displays a lot of his – tractors and things like that as far as tilling the land how you farm and stuff like that i really like watching it and the and one of the main reasons i like it is because i well i grow weed uh but not only that if i had some fields i would grow barley for for beer and stuff like that so it really uh and the corn and everything else that you would add um as adjuncts and stuff to your beer. It'd be really cool to be a farmer. So it's really fun to watch his channel and just see how uh, he fixes uh, tractors. He he shows how he tills the land. He shows how he uh, seeds it and everything else that he does on his farm. So it's just awesome. Thank you for being here, man. I, I really like supporting your channel. Support him, please. Uh, Vanessa Kitty is always supporting us. Always, always, always there. 
always around, always very giving off some great advice on food items and a lot of really cool ideas that come to mind. And I really want to try. <laughs> I want you cooking. I want to be there for Thanksgiving at your house. <laughs> But no, thank you so much. I need to buy beers in the larger bottles. Here, let me put that up. I need to buy beers in the larger bottles and cans to make patterns for 30 leather can holders. Oh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That sounds righteous. And we have Elbow88 here who is the shit. On the organ, on the on the piano, and the uh, the keyboard. Let's say not the organ. Uh, <laughs> I'm in Oregon, man. No, it's very good to see you. Thank you for popping on in, man. Appreciate your support, man. This dude's talented. Check him out. Check him out. He is talented, talented man. He does beer reviews, plays the keyboard, freaking does weed reviews. Um, awesome, just. Awesome. So cool, man. I had a great show today. Love you guys. Love you, community. Thank you so much for your support. You guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. And I'm going to end this with my outro. <laughs>